every year they're reinforcing their standard. They're kind of telling you what they expect you to be. So now we know for the games what they're expecting females to be able to clean, right? Because we've had that muscle up clean ladder. Essentially, they're setting the precedent of you have to be this strong, fill in the blank. So the precedent is become more and more clear. But in terms of the importance, that hasn't changed at all. Even when I was training Chris Spieler back in the day, we knew the price of admission back then was a 225 snatch. So we worked our tails off for that 225 snatch. What confidence is has nothing to do with winning or the leaderboard. What confidence is, is knowing that you giving your best effort is enough. Okay, Ben. Hello, how are you? I'm good, Patrick. Good. <laughs> um, today we're going to talk about something that we've talked about a little bit in the past, but we're going to sort of go a different direction with it. Um, and that topic is programming. Um, we've talked about it before, uh, thinking about or, or, or looking specifically at athletes inside of a gym, inside of a CrossFit affiliate, mm -hmm. um, and how you program for them versus how you would program for a competitive athlete and mm -hmm. the importance of doing and the importance of knowing that there is a differentiation between the two. Today I wanted to go the other way and talk about programming specifically for the spot of uh, the sport of CrossFit. Um, something that you've done for a long time, obviously working with Catherine and Matt and Cole and Brooke, but also through um, CompTrain, which is something that you've also done for, for a very long time. So obviously something that you've thought a lot about in terms of what are the differences, what are the similarities and what are the differences between these two populations? So we'll start in, in one place that um, I feel like you've talked a lot about, which is this idea of once you are strong enough, then you, then you, can, then you focus on conditioning, mm -hmm. right? And this idea of, of there, is, there are certain markers that you need to be able to hit in terms of strength numbers before you are ever competitive at a regionals or certainly the games. So let's let's just dive into that to start, which is this idea of like, what does what does strong enough mean? What does how do you know when it's time to spend less time moving heavy weights slowly and more time to move you know moving moderately heavy weights quickly? Yeah, I think that there's. A, um, I obviously like this topic. I mm -hmm. like talking about programming um, and developing athletes, particularly in in the sport. Um, I think that there's what we call a three-headed monster. And I, for our regular members, this doesn't really hold um, hold water. Mm -hmm. It's more about just getting them fit and getting their biomarkers in place and trying to push off the nursing home and give them full capacity into their 90s, living disease-free. Yep. For our competitive athletes, we take a very drastically different approach. Mm -hmm. And essentially what you have to have is, it's almost like pass-fail. Mm -hmm. You have to get these passing marks in certain categories. And those are strength, which we're about to talk about, skills, so think like handstand push-ups, handstand walking, uh, muscle-ups, things like that, and then finally conditioning. Mm -hmm. So conditioning, you're gonna have a hard time competing at the regional level if you don't have a sub three minute Fran. Like that's just, it's not shocking to anybody. It's like really obvious. Yep. Well, similar to that is if you're a male and you can't do 15 unbroken muscle-ups, Believe it or not, that's kind of the standard now at the regional level. You have to be able to do that. Now, if you have incredible strength somewhere else, you might be able to get away with it. But mm -hmm. by far, in a way, it's kind of like that's the benchmark. That's where we need to be. And the same thing holds true for strength, where you essentially have a pass or a fail. So the way I look at this is let's just take one movement and kind of lay this out to kind of explain what I'm talking about. Okay. If you think about the open, if you want to be competitive in the open – you have to be able to snatch 245 pounds. That's kind of like the price of admission. Mm -hmm. That's the expectation that you have. And the case in point there is the second to last bar in 17.3, which was, uh, or 17.3? Yeah, 17.3 was 245 pounds. And then we're up to 265. So they're saying like, not even the top guys, but we're expecting the majority of the good people to get to 245. Mm -hmm inside of a conditioning workout. Right. At the regional level, 265 was the last bar in a ladder. So they're expecting us to get to 265 at the regional level. That's kind of the price of admission. You got to be able to get there. If you don't get to that last bar, you're going to have a really hard time competing at a high level at the regionals. And finally, at the games, 
Uh, the last posted average scores for games athletes was 275, but that's basically a year lag. So mm -hmm. I would call that 285 now. Okay. So my numbers are open regionals games for snatches. It goes 245, 265, 285. If you don't have those numbers, you could have a 155 Fran. You could be able to do 50 um, unbroken chest bars. You could do 25 unbroken muscle ups. You could be able to walk 300 feet on your hands unbroken and you don't get to play with the big boys. Right. So that's what I mean by once you're strong enough. Then once you have those numbers, then stop chasing those. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes, let's be create this balanced three-headed monster. Mm -hmm. But I think that um, there's an, it's easily misinterpreted once I say once you're strong enough, yeah. people are saying, I don't think strength is important. It's actually just the opposite mm -hmm. of that. You need to be strong enough. If you are not this strong, you can't play. Yeah. Interesting. Um, how how has your understanding of that and developed over the years, like over the course of the CrossFit Games um, history, all of 10 years, but has it always been like that? Or have you seen that now it's more evident than ever that that is, that that is the case? Um, I think in terms of the hard numbers, it's become more evident because they're kind of every year they're reinforcing their standard. They're kind of telling you what they expect you to be. So now we know for the games what they're expecting females to be able to clean, right? Because mm -hmm. we've had that muscle up clean yeah. ladder. Essentially, they're setting the precedent of you have to be this strong, fill in the blank. So the precedent is become more and more clear. But in terms of the importance, that hasn't changed at all. Okay. Even when I was training Chris Spieler back in the day, we knew the price of admission back then was a 225 snatch. So we worked our tails off for that 225 snatch. Yeah. And for everybody that remembers, that's what got him into the regionals that yeah. year. He had to hit a 225 snatch mm -hmm. to make it. And he did, mm -hmm. which was a five pound PR at the time. Mm -hmm. But we knew that without that number, he wouldn't make it. So it's just, you have to kind of, and that's where it was back then. It's yeah. 225. Yeah. Now the regional level is 265. It's just... Yeah. Is it's a would, moving target. Would a would an athlete like Chris Spieler, if he was coming up today, would he be able to be as competitive as Chris was the number of years he was? Obviously, he was sort of like he everybody was getting stronger and also yep. he was just kind of getting older and to the point where but like could you know, I think of Cody Anderson. You yep. know, well, he's a little bit different because he's No, I think Chris Spieler is the right example. Um I actually think that um the strength numbers now would put Chris he, he wouldn't be able to hit these numbers that yeah. we're talking about. So he'd be at a real disadvantage. Yeah. But the kind of the caveat to that is if he were to, let's say it didn't show up, like at regionals this year, yep. it didn't show up, yep. right? We didn't see the barbell. If he gets to the next level, the way the scoring system is now versus the way scores used to be, he actually has a greater advantage because he gets to win workouts. Mm. So anything that comes up, body weight or running. So why don't dive into that a little bit because I think that that's something that, I mean, I, I haven't thought about it too much, but just like the- The, the scoring the, system dictates whether it, they reward um, outliers or it becomes your weakest link. Okay. So in the open format, here's the big eye opener for everybody. In the open format, it doesn't matter how good you are at anything. It only matters how bad you are. So if you, if there's six tests, there's five tests. If there's five tests and five of those, you come in first or four of them, you come in first, 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 first. And then the last one, you come in 1,118th, you're out. Mm -hmm. You don't get to move on because hmm. they expose the weakness. We have a guy in our gym like this that is going to annihilate the open until handstand pushes pop up. <laughs> and then yeah. he's going to come in the thousandth and he's not going to move on. You know, whereas in the games, if you come in first, 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 and then last, you're going to win the CrossFit games because mm -hmm. there's only 40 spots instead of competing against thousands of spots. And then similarly, they give huge pri pri I say price breaks. <laughs> they give huge rewards for the winners. Yep. So first place gets 100, second place gets 95 or 96, depending yep. on which we're going to go to. But essentially first to fifth is a 20 point swing. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the open, first to fifth is a five point swing. Mm -hmm. It's not that big of a deal. Gotcha. The thing you can't do in the open is get exposed. Yep. In the games, it's not as bad to get exposed. Mm -hmm. You can make it up. What about regionals? Is that closer to the regionals? Regionals is just like the games, okay. it's exactly okay. like the games. Um, okay, so 
we have a good sense of what sort of what that overarching the only difference is. i'll say about the yeah. regionals is that people come in with a little bit there's um more differentiation mm -hmm. and there's not as varied of a test and there's not as many tests mm -hmm. so whereas the games has 13 to 15 events that's true you can make it up yep. if you come in last in one but you come in top five and all the others you're going to win the crossfit games mm -hmm. that's what's going to happen mm -hmm. you know matt fraser came in a whole bunch of top fives and then had a 27th or something like that out of and he won by the biggest landslide in the history yeah. of the games. In the regionals, you can't make that up because there's only there's seven space. tests. Yeah. Yeah. So there's more leeway. It's still a winner's reward system. It's still going to, you want to be, have, be a home run hitter, um, but you can't do what you do at the games. Yeah. Okay. So we have an understanding of, of what you mean by, you know, once you're strong enough. So my question is, or, or, or maybe the next question would be, how do you know? I mean, you can you can look at the numbers and say, okay, I'm there. I'm not there. I'm not there. Let's assume that most people aren't there mm -hmm. because most people aren't there. Right. <laughs> what next? Like, do how you, do you get there? Yeah. How do you not? How do you get there? But how do you build a plan so that you're better, knowing that most people aren't going to want to say, I'm going to not compete for two years so that I can only get stronger, and then, yep. even though maybe that's maybe that's the answer. But how do you like build a program or, or, or a training year? Knowing that okay, I'm deficient here, but at some point I have to, you know, do Fran again so that I can be competitive there as well. Uh, it, 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 cop out answer, but it depends, <laughs> right? And it depends yeah. on where the strengths and weaknesses lie and how exaggerated they are. Yeah. So if you're the type of athlete, so let's take like a, a younger Chris Spieler, right? Yep. Like the guy that can do 25 walking into the sport can do 25 unbroken muscle ups, handstand push up for days, the best conditioning in the sport, but you know, his one rep max back squat is under 300. Mm -hmm. An athlete like that, depending on what their goals are, if they want to compete in the open, just kind of keep working on your strength along with the conditioning on the side. But if you want to like make a push in the sport and do some damage, um, you know, get to those higher levels, an athlete like that would need to take two or three years of dedicated strength training. Mm -hmm. And the goal there is, again, because he's not going to get through. Yep. You can't get through unless you have prerequisite strength numbers. Yep. And you can't get those by doing this. No one's getting a 550 pound deadlift by doing main site programming. Mm -hmm. You're just not. Or mm -hmm. like even, you know, something like comp train programming. Yep. You're not. You're going to comp train programming. You're going to the goal of that. It's developed to maximize people's potential for March mm -hmm. and then May for the regionals yep. and then uh, for the open and the regionals. To that end, our goal is to make bigger gains than the field in all categories. Well, if the field, and we know this is improving three to 5% across the board in their muscle ups, in their handstand walking, in their Fran times, and their back squats and snatches, we need to be improving at seven to 10% yep. across the board. Yep. And we're programmed for the masses, so that's what we're trying to do. For somebody with incredibly huge deficiencies, you moving up the needles, you know, you adding 15 pounds on your snatch this year is not going to cut it. Mm -hmm. You going from a 165 snatch to a 190 snatch this year doesn't matter at all. You need to go from a 165 snatch over the course of the next two or three years to a 245 snatch. Mm -hmm. That is a drastic improvement that only takes place with dedicated strength training. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying give up conditioning altogether. Right. What you need to do, this is my take on this, yep. my approach would be, let's go to a dedicated weightlifting program where we're not gonna lose. Basically, my metric would be, are you afraid of doing conditioning workouts? Mm -hmm. if, you're done, if you're only doing conditioning like two times a week and there are these little burners that last three minutes, you know, you get on a salt bike and yep. do some burpees, you're not going to, it's going to take you too long to come back. Gotcha. I'm okay for it to drop. I'm okay for it to go down substantially, mm -hmm. two, three, four notches. But we can't get to the point where you lose in conditioning altogether. Mm -hmm. Now, the kind of cool part about that is it's okay if it comes down because conditioning takes months to get good at. And it's easy to get back if it's lost. Yep. Strength takes years to get good at and if you come back away from it it stays pretty good yeah. these are these guys like you know example like louis simmons who's you know um back squatting close to a thousand pounds has back surgery doesn't lift for two years at all period first time under the bar squats like 750 mm -hmm. like you're, <laughs> dude you're still really yeah. strong but conditioning wise if you don't do 
any working out at all for two and a half years, you come back to Fran and you were under two minutes before, you're not going to be under 230. <laughs> you're not going to yeah. be under three. Yeah. It goes away fast, but it comes back fast. Yeah. Strength takes forever to build. We measure it in years, not months, but it sticks and stays. So we can build it. So let's say we spend two or three years to build it to where we are happy with our numbers. We are now snatching 265. We are now clean and jerking 345. We can now back squat in the mid fours. We can deadlift above five. Now we're pretty solid. If we just play with barbells like in a normal comp train type programming, yep. and we use the rest as conditioning, those numbers are going to stick and stay, potentially even climb, yeah. i.e. Matt Fraser. Mm -hmm. His numbers are continuing to climb without the dedicated strength programming. Yep. By doing a fitness-based programming, yep. he's still PRing best ever snatch and clean and jerk. He set a PR clean and jerk in training last year leading up to the games, mm -hmm. being a CrossFitter. Right. These numbers can continue to climb, but not without, you're not gonna get to a 375 clean jerk like Matt has yep. without the years of dedicated strength training. So it depends a lot on people's goals. It depends a lot on the starting point, but the overall approach is you gotta have these prerequisite numbers to compete at a certain level. You figure out the level you wanna be at and you figure out what those numbers are mm -hmm. and you build towards them knowing that one takes a lot longer to build than the yeah. other. Maybe a silly question, but when you say strength, is there a differentiation in your mind between- Fast strength um, and slow strength? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Like, um, and, and where do you, you know, is it 60% one and yeah. 40% or is I'm it- I'm not differentiating between the two. Yeah. I, think, uh, I think it's about moving heavy loads. Okay. In our sport, they require you to do both. But I think the really easy numbers for us is we always see always see at every level, I say always, but except for last year at the so regionals. regionals. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's an outlier. Okay, every year throughout the yep. season, so open regionals and games, we have always seen multiple times snatch, clean, and or jerk. Mm -hmm. We don't always see the slow lifts. Right. We don't always see squat. We don't always see dead. We don't always see press or we've never seen bench. Mm -hmm. So if I was to put my emphasis onto one of them, it would be on the O lifts, the mm -hmm. fast lifts, clean jerk and snatch, use the other things to build the supplemental strength behind it. But that's our sport. That's our competition. And knowing that you know we want to be squatting because it builds the other lifts. Yeah. How, how would you think about it or how do you think about it if it's a teenager... Uh, a teen athlete who says, okay, I want CrossFit to be my sport and, and sort of same, same question, but for a 50 year old, a 55 year old master's athlete, yep. how do you, how do you guide them with that philosophy? How do you still guide them towards sort of the right? Great the right question. Part? Okay. So for the teen athlete, I would put even more emphasis on the strength side. Mm -hmm. I would put a, a great deal of lifting with really strong mechanics. You know, our, our tenant of mechanics, consistency, only then intensity, that could be used as a newbie entering into your gym or a um, the development of the progression of an athlete from youth to adolescence to young adulthood to adulthood. Yep. It's the same thing where we want to go, everything goes into mechanics. So have your CrossFit kids you know, doing PVC clean and jerks. Yep. Have your um, high school, middle school classes doing um, really light load back squats. And then as they develop and they work on the mechanics and the body positions and everything else, the form and technique, then we can start to load them knowing again, strength takes years, yep. conditioning takes months. We can start to build them up as they start to progress and get past, you know, later years mm -hmm. into their um, early adulthood of, you know, 17, 18. That's where I'd want to be putting those guys on pretty serious strength building programs. Mm -hmm. um, from there, I'd also want to be building in the skill sets, gymnastics and conditioning, but I'd want them to get strong first. Mm -hmm. And that's regardless of male or female. Okay. For the master's athletes, I would take a different approach. Um, we're not going to, a master's athlete is not going to go from a 165 snatch to a 265 snatch. Yep. Nobody in their 50s and 60s is going to be doing that. The goal there is uh, preservation. And then all we're trying to do is inch up if the field is year over year. And this is kind of where it's weird because year over year, you're going into a different age group. Yep. So it's actually kind of the opposite where um, the performance metrics are dropping mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. So your goal is to maintain. Yep. If you are maintaining, if you've already built yourself a 245 pound snatch, your goal is to maintain that 
throughout not to build up into it. Yep. There's too much wear and tear. There's too much um, that we're trying to do to the, the sacrifice we're going to try and make for that. Also, those guys don't have another 10 to 15 years of competition yep. in them. Yep. They only have potentially this next year um, in their age group, maybe two. Very few athletes are competing in the later stages of the age group competitively, and then they'll wait, and that's where they could build in the next one if they want to, mm -hmm. and they compete, and they build to the next one. Cool. Um, anything else interesting worth talking about for... I got a lot of things yes. I could talk about <laughs> <laughs> on this particular. Subject. I think we're good. Okay. Let's wrap it up. All right. Thank thanks, you. Pat.